How many of you guys run double slants? Anybody run slants? Right? How do you teach the angle of the slant? It's tough, right? A slant can be here, 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 here. They're ambiguous. You never know where the hell a slant's going to go. 15 years ago, I made a decision. Okay, the only time I was going to run double slants was when I was playing Madden and I had David Boston uh, out there as a wide receiver, throw him a slant. He scored 88 yard touchdowns every time. Okay, so I got rid of double slants and we went to this. Okay, we call it Dino. Dino stands for down and in. So I get paid the big bucks to come up with stuff like that. Okay, it's a five yard square in and a route that we call a hip up. Get to the inside hip of whoever the alley defender is, whether it's a backer or spin down safety, and then go straight vertical. Okay, our, I can blindfold our quarterbacks and they can throw a five yard square in. Okay, it's set up the same way as double slants, but it's a much cleaner read and a much easier throw. We ran the 72 times this year, completed it uh, at just over 74%, 10.3 yards a catch when we ran this play. Okay, we can do it out of two by two, three by one, 12 personnel, 10 personnel, 11 personnel. It doesn't matter. Our Dino concept um, is, is what allowed us to have a lot of success uh, within this offense. So again, a five yard square. Now we teach these guys out here, hey, if there's somebody standing on the line that you can run, stop. Don't get your head knocked off. Okay, we always teach our hip ups to get to the inside hip and straight vertical because if this guy does expand to take away the five yard square in, we wanna keep him away from any box backer that could be expanding as well. That's why we take him straight vertical. I'll show you guys clips of this. Okay, this is an example of us running in three by one. Okay, number three's job is to sit five yards over the ball. In 15 years running this play, I've probably thrown it 2,000 times. We've only thrown this guy once because they brought a, a, a double dog blitz right up the middle. We replaced the blitz with the throw. He caught it, sliced up the field. It was like a 60 yard gain. We caught him in a blitz. Our quarterback saw it and hit that. Okay, we got our Dino concept out here. And then I'll introduce what we call a triple combo. Okay, and we practice this a bunch, but it becomes very easy. He can run a, a square in, a speed out, or a vertical based on the corner's leverage. Corner's off inside, he runs a five yard speed out, throw it to the boundary, very simple. Corner's off outside leverage, run a little square in and stop. Again, it's, they're giving you the open alley. If there's no alley defender here to the single receiver side, take it. Corner's pressed up and they want to fit this guy into the box and bring some blitz. Well, now you got a one-on-one -on -one with what should be your best receiver. Okay, now, uh, what was it, six years ago I made the change. Our outside receivers never flip sides. Okay, I did, had the GPS deals on our, quarter, on our receivers when I was out in South Dakota. And we figured out that they were running 2.1 extra miles of practice. Just simply switching sides. Okay, you're talking 53 and a third running all the way, because we have wide splits, that they're just flipping sides and they're running an extra two miles of practice. So what we teach our guys is, are you on the front side of the formation or the back side? Okay, so we have back side and front side combinations. It's a little bit more learning for the outside receivers. We're fortunate because we get to meeting time. Once they pick up the concepts, it becomes very simple for them. Okay, and that way we can keep these guys on the outside fresher longer throughout the season, throughout games. Okay, so that's our Dino. So, Triple combo, we'll take that if there's an open alley. If there's nobody over here and you get a one-on-one -on -one with a corner that's off inside leverage, man, throw your speed out, okay? One guy on our team caught that 29 times this season. It's simple, it's very easy, okay? So again, the, uh, the Dino aspect replaces double slants, pretty easy stuff. So let's take a look at some film here. Okay, so here we're in, in uh, 12 personnel. We got a little twins look. Okay, now, well, coach, what if they blitz this outside backer? Somebody's going to be playing this area of the field, right? Okay, whether it's his backer that expands, safety backs up, or he blitzes, safety spins down, that's who you're running your hip up off of. Okay, for defensive players, any alley defender, when number two goes vertical, what are they taught to do? You gotta get hands on, right? Yeah, wall them off, get hands on. Anytime they get hands on number two, you know, we win. Fast forward this a little bit here. So here we are, we're running our hip up off of the now alley defender, five yards square in. There it is, okay? You run a slant, you're probably hitting the inside guy because they're trying to bracket number, number one, but five yards square in, pick plant throw for our quarterbacks, 
Pretty easy stuff. Okay, if you guys ever want to talk pass pro stuff too, basically what we do is we have a, a set attack pass pro. We can full line slide it. We can have a five man pass pro, six man pass pro, full line, seven man slide. Okay, we also have what we call a, excuse my language, a bitch call. Okay, where all five offensive linemen uh, go and cut. Okay, just every, every so often our center will make a bitch call and you find a guy, you go cut him. Gets hands down, uh, our quarterbacks are allowed to, to get the ball out pretty quick. Um, and the, the play happens so quickly. Okay, we run it a lot. Our quarterbacks are easy, easily read it. Um, we actually had an A-gap blitzer. Okay, standing right in the A-gap, linebacker. Blitz right up the A-gap. Our, our center did, went one way, our guard went the other. He was unblocked, okay, 15 feet from the quarterback. Quarterback got the ball out, completed it before he got touched, okay? Uh, here's another example. Now, five-yard square ends. This is North Central. Uh, they saw us run this play a ton. So they tried to mess with us to the boundary, okay? And obviously, we're in the middle of the field here, but watch what this guy does right here. See how he just runs out, turns his hips, Okay, this is why we try to keep, keep this vertical. We tell our guys too, if you start getting in a 10 yard window, you're gonna, get your, you're gonna get your head whacked, right? By that safety coming down. So what we do is we tell them to choke themselves down. Okay, so if you can't figure it out, I mean, North Central saw us run this play. I think we run it 13 times against him in that game. Okay, so now he's expanding. They were sick of us just hitting five yard square ends on him. All right, so now he's expanding. Well, now you run the hip up and you throw the hip up and you get a what? A, a, 11 yard gain, okay? I'll run that one back here. Coach, what if you have that, that head up defender just shuffling out the slant and not turning hips and you keep him behind there? Yeah, so if this guy just shuffles out, if he expands at all and we can get inside hip and vertical, there's a throwing lane here. It has nothing to do with the, the flip of the hips or anything? No, no, if he expands in any type of way, there's a throwing lane because we're gonna end up boxing him out right then and there, okay? Most of the time, these guys are taught to do what to number two? Reroute, hands on, wall him, get hands on. The second he gets hands on, just like this guy squeezing him, there's a wide open window to throw a five yard square in. It's awesome. That was the one hip up that we hit all year because the rest of them we threw the five yard square ins. I had to put that one up there because it doesn't happen very often, it's pretty neat. Where do you start the quarterback? You start the front side, back side? Quarterback can choose best leverage. Okay, so he's looking at his alley defenders here. He can choose best leverage. This guy's tighter, corners off a little bit more, outside leverage. Maybe it's a, hey, you know, they're pretty good team with their corners that want to come up. Uh, so boundaries, a much shorter throw, I'll take that. Three by one, we have our triple combo, then we have our field, so it's typically a field read. But he can choose the best leverage. You know, we watch on film, hey, this outside backer, he gets real froggy, he likes to, to try to get in, in the run game anything like that, so we can easily read whoever we want. Uh, sometimes we game plan it, but this is a really easy boundary throw. Here's our read. Okay, that guy just turns and is ready to get hands on too. Look how wide open that is. Okay, same thing up top here. He's working to get to the inside hip. His eyes are on two, wide open. You can throw it either way. It's simple. Five yard catch, turns it into an 11 yard gain. Okay, very simple. You can run it versus cover two, cover three, cover four. It doesn't matter what coverage they're in because we can be successful with it. Okay, if you, watch what, if you watch what the outside receiver does here on his five-yard square, now we got to get him better at coming off the ball harder. Okay, he stops, right? Because he sees on his break, he plants his foot. He sees this guy sitting right here. I'm just going to stop. Okay, makes, he could have taken maybe one step in. We're still able to complete it, but he knows if I keep running, the quarterback's gonna throw me inside, I'm gonna get my head whacked. Okay, so try to, self-preservation is key at some points. Okay, here's another great example. Okay, so we get to the point now, this is algebra two, calculus type stuff. You know, we, we started seeing these corners really drive down inside on number one. So we came to the sideline, we made an in-game adjustment, said, hey man, if you catch a Dino, spin to the outside, because they're really trying to jump. You know, we're gonna gain five yards, but hey, maybe we can get get a bigger gain if we allowed, oh, excuse me, if we allowed that corner to jump inside like he does here. See how, how heavy he's playing inside? That's fine, we can still complete it. If he tries to knife it upfield here, he's still gonna get a five yard gain. Okay, but now we told him, hey, spin outside. We spin outside, he gets a 14 yard gain on a five yard square. 
pretty easy stuff. Okay, now this guy was an All-American. We weren't going to try to throw a, a, a triple combo, but I'll show you that here in a little bit. Okay, Wheaton. This is a, this is a pretty, good, uh, pretty good defense that we were playing. Okay, so here we go. Now, it's a great example of a much tighter alley defender. Okay, so he's really got to work to get to his inside hip. But what does that do to the outside guy? Opens it wide open. Okay, this is cover three. They're trying to cloud the backside, which is great because we threw a lot to that dude. So they're playing cover three. Just throw a, it's essentially a five-yard hitch, right? Very simple, knife it upfield. Again, first down on second and six. It's pretty easy stuff. Okay, so here we got uh, our three by one. Okay, we're going to be in, in seven man full slide protection. Okay, which means he now becomes a single receiver. So we give him our triple combo option. What you notice is this safety's hunkering in. There's going to bring some pressure here. Okay, and that safety's going to fit in the box. We call that three buzz. He's, he's buzzing into the box. Well, it creates a one on one. All right, and we saw this on film. They, they get this, this safety spinning in the box. This guy wants to be real physical at the line of scrimmage. Well, all you got to do is get a release, no safety help, and we turn our triple combo into a 40-some yard, 48-yard touchdown pass. Okay, so this is, could we have thrown the Dino to this side of the field? Absolutely. It's still wide open. Okay, but they gave us a one-on-one -on -one with our, our best receiver. He got a great release. We score a touchdown. It's pretty cool. Thank you for that. Okay, same exact look. Now, I get this all the time. Well, coach, what if he's pressed up? That's okay. We work, we work this five-yard square in versus all types of different leverage. We should be able to, to throw this again, but same exact defense, right? They're going to bring pressure. Safety's fitting in the box. This guy throws hands hot. We get a release. Now it's a, an even longer touchdown versus the number one defense that we played against. Okay. If we were to throw the Dino route down here, it's still open, right? Throw him by, that's open. In our league, that's about all you get sometimes. We got to be able to complete that even to the field. Okay, any questions on Dino? Any of you guys that run slants, you adopt this, you'll never change. It'll change your life. Okay, but again, we got to release, throw that triple combo. We threw the triple combo into the boundary, guys, a, a ton of times. Okay, it just so happens that he pressed up and, and our receiver had it, happened to get a, a good release there. Okay, so here's an example of our old line making a, their bitch call, right? Well, unfortunately, he's better than him, he's better than him, he's better than him, he's better than everybody, he's better than him. We don't get a single guy on the ground. Son of a bitch, okay? Like, imagine playing quarterback and seeing this coming right at you. Holy hell. All right, but the ball's out quick enough. Whether he threw the Dino or he threw the triple combo, the ball's out quick enough, our quarterback doesn't get touched. Okay, I'm gonna rewind that for you guys one more time to see how absolutely horrible we were up front. By the way, freshman, 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 senior. Started four freshmen, one senior on the offensive line. None of them knew how to cut. Thank you NCAA for not allowing us to cut in practices, that's great. That's awesome. 